I'll be fishing today. How the Chinese computer has already been hacked. Well, if that is the case, then you wouldn't be having to wear this mask at all. So, <laughs> let's get started. You see on the news all the time about all these different type of hacking incidents of compromises of different type of computers and you watch all these different type of YouTube videos about PCs getting hacked into or perhaps your computer is just acting up strangely. Now the question is, how can I check if my computer has already been compromised? Well, the first thing to do is just go ahead and throw away your PC <laughs> and buy a new one. Well, just kidding. The first thing you need can either be a laptop all right, or a PC over here to check whether it has already been compromised. Without either of this, there is really no point in continuing with this tutorial. <laughs> so the first tool we can use is Task Manager to help us identify all these different running processes that you have within your computer and also checking, say, what are the different type of services that are being started up when you launch your computer. We'll also be using Command Prompt to help us check, say, using some of these commands like NetStat, task list to look at all these different processes and be able to identify which one of them are malicious. Number two, we'll be using Microsoft Sys internal suites to help us use advanced tools to look at all these different processes. For example, if you download any malicious software or you open up a PDF document or a malicious Word document and so on, how do they spawn into other, say, command prompt or possibly PowerShell as well to remotely control your PC? Because I've already hacked into your computer. Oh, sorry. I mean, I've already hacked into the other computer that I've demonstrating here. It's easy for us to see what are those indicators of attacks or indicators of compromise to identify whether your computer has already been hacked. Remember to smash the like button and turn on the notification to the channel so that you get notified whenever you get hacked. Now, right in front of us, I have the hacker's computer and you can see from here we have a Quasar running. All right, so this allows us to remotely control the computer and I can go under settings. All right, from settings, you can see over here, port to listen on is 4782. So this is a listener for us. So this allows us to remotely control the PC. I click start listening or I click save and just give it a couple of seconds, we'll be able to get connectivity. Boom, there you go, you see right here. We've got a computer right now that we have remote control over into. And of course, you can expand this a little more. You can see the IP address, you can see the tag, you can see the version and so on and so forth. And of course, with the status connected and all of these different details. Now over here, this is the computer that has already been hacked. And if you've already been hacked, you can hardly tell the difference at all. That wouldn't be like a pop unless you got hit by a ransomware attack where it locks up all of your computer and you'll not be able to interact with the computer at all unless you make a payment. So right here, if you go to the bottom, you can see on a taskbar, right click on that, click under task manager. And from task manager, this is going to be the first tool you'll be using to identify any suspicious services or processes you're running. So over here, the one that stands out the most is of course, Quasar Client, but again, the process name can easily be changed. So additionally, what you can do is click on startup. And from startup, you can see over here, we have all these different type of processes that are part of the startup as your computer is running. All right, so if you see here, we have something like Quarcer Client and there isn't a publisher name. So that's the first indicator that this could be a malicious software. The next option is to go to the bottom left and go and click under command prompt. And from command prompt, what we will do now is to look like a hacker. But no, just kidding. We are checking if we have been hacked. So the first command is enter is netstat followed by dash ano and then find string established. So we're looking for established connections to another computer and not a PC. I hit enter on that and you can see right here, we have something very interesting. So you can see from something very interesting, we have 4782 being established. The rest of it, 443, port 80, these are connected to some of these web servers, meaning that you're just surfing the internet, looking at some of this information over there. The next thing we do is to go in and check what exactly is this process running? So we go ahead and enter the process ID of 5052 and then followed by the following of get executable path, All right? So enter this, get executable path, hit enter on that and boom, you can see right here, this is the location of where the file is running from. So what we can do now is go back over task manager, click on that, expand on this, go under details. And from details, we can look for 5052, which is the running process. And in this case, we have the target of Quasar client. So we're looking for strange type of process name or processes that shouldn't be running in a computer. We're looking for unusual IP addresses that your computer is connected to and strange port numbers that your computer typically do not surf into, say for example, outside of port 80, outside of port 443. Now moving to the more advanced part of the tutorial, we can be using something like Microsoft Sys internal suite over here to help us download and use advanced tools to look out for all this possibly malicious software. So it is literally like task manager on steroids. 
As you can see here, I have already downloaded the Sys internal suite and we can start using all of these different tools to help us check whether our computer has been compromised. So the first one we can use is auto run 64.exe. Double click on that and you can see right here, what are the different services that start along with your PC? And the first one we can see that's being highlighted immediately is the one in RAID. So you can see here we have Quarser client startup and the publisher is not verified. Whereas if you see the other startup services, they have verified from Microsoft all right, or any other publishers. Now to investigate further, you can go ahead and click onto the question client, right click on that, click under process explorer. So this startup, the ability for us to look at what this process is doing in more details. So I can scroll down a little more and we can see something like client.exe, which is Quarsa client. So this is the one that we'll be investigating. So what I can do now is go ahead and do a right click on it and click under properties. And from properties, you can see from TCP IP tab, all right, we have the following. This is the TCP protocol. We have the target port. We have the local address and the remote address. So we establish a connection to the Windows hacker. And that is very concerning. The other tool that we can use is TCP view 64.exe. Double click on that and you can see right here. All right, and we are targeting, of course, in this case, the process ID of 5052 client.exe. So what I'm gonna do now is switch over to the hacker. I will do a right click on the, the target PC administration and I click onto something like system information. So we're just collecting some information. I can close this. I can do a right click again. I can click under say remote shell or right? I can enter things like who are you? All right, just kidding, there isn't such a command. I can enter who am I? All right, so we're running all this different type of commands remotely from the hacker. Now, if I head back over into TCP view, I can see right here, client.exe, we're having send bytes and receive bytes. So what does this mean? This means that there is an established connection with the IP address of 182.168.0.185 and is doing some kind of interaction with the computer. And that means it is being remotely controlled. And a couple of things you can do. So you can do a right click and click on to say Q process, click terminate process, boom. And we have now disconnected the hacker. So if I go back to the hacker's computer, you can see right here, it is gone. All right, we have now terminated the process, terminated the connection. Last but not the least, we have process monitoring. So this allows us to check, is the process trying to do something funny? So double click on this, I'll click reset, click apply on this, click okay. And what we're trying to do now is to see exactly what are all these different processes doing inside your computer. So the first thing we can do is say, click onto filter. So we are trying to dive deep. We're trying to get into detail of exactly what this client.exe is doing. So what I can do now is click under filter, all right? And what I can select on is in this case, we can give it a process name as the filter is client.exe, then include. Click add, click apply, click okay on that. And we can see right here, this is the client.exe that we are trying to see. What are you trying to do? So if I head back over into the hacker computer, I do a right click on this, I click on the administration, I click on a remote shell, and I enter, say, who am I? I enter DIR, and so on and so forth. So I'm entering, I'm interacting with the computer. And if I head back over into the victim computer, you can see here, we are interacting, right, with Windows Hacker 4782. There are exchange of information, there are threats process being created to interact with the machine. So you can see here, we even have cmd.exe being executed. So I can do a right click on this and we can say under properties. All right, so we can see exactly why is this being called? All right, I can close on this and I can click under the process tree. So on the process tree, we can see right here, client.exe is now running the following of cmd.exe. It's also running of whomi.exe and so on. So why would a specific executable or process be running and spawning all these different controls against your computer? 